Hey everyone, let's talk about the winners and losers of the first round of the 2023 NHL Draft. If you're a new subscriber, welcome. Hit that like button, hit the notification bell, and definitely drop your comments down below on your winners and losers. So this is just for the first round. I'll probably do one for the whole draft, uh, but it's easier to do for the first round. I mean, coming out of the first round, Chicago getting Bedard, but also Oliver Moore where they got him. I think Chicago fans of the Blackhawks got to be super happy with the outcome. Columbus getting Fantilli. Michigan, as I talked about, not too far away from Ohio. I talked about it on the pregame uh, live stream for the draft. Uh, there were certain picks that I adjusted based on my mock, and I talked about Mitch Koff going to Philly and Reinbacher going to Montreal. I thought there was maybe going to be a trade there, but, I mean, Reinbacher was there for Montreal, and they were confident in it, and Mitch Koff fell to Philly, and there were some rumors that they had private interviews with Mitch Koff, and they were confident enough. Uh, and then Ryan Leonard obviously falls to Washington. Uh, but I did talk about Fantilli potentially going to Columbus and it does end up happening. So Columbus, I actually see as a huge W here just for that pick. Uh, San Jose getting Will Smith, which was expected in my eyes, but also getting Quinton Musty late in the draft, an absolute steal. I said if Musty went anywhere past 25, absolute steal and San Jose got him towards the end. Uh, as I just mentioned, the Flyers getting Mitch Koff, huge dub, but also Oliver Bonk. I think some people are underestimating Bonk. I have a lot of expectations for him. And the fact that the Flyers come out of the first round with a forward and defenseman. And I mean, Mitch Koff's probably going to be a top three, top four uh, pick when we talk about this 10 years from now, uh, especially if he joins the NHL in the next few years. Uh, Mitch Koff can be a generational talent potentially. Uh, Rangers getting Perot as late as they did and Buffalo getting Benson as late as they did. I saw Benson easily as a top seven, top eight prospect in this draft. And the fact that he fell to 13 to Buffalo, Sabres are a huge dub here, and Rangers as well. I was very high on Kobe Barlow as well. I thought he was a potential top 10 pick, but even top 12, top 13. The fact that the Jets got Barlow at their spot, huge W, and I already talked about Washington. So those are a few of the Ws. I think there's a lot of other picks that I liked, uh, but in terms of Chicago, Columbus, San Jose, Flyers, Rangers, Sabres, Jets, capitals uh those are a few winners to list losers i mean i don't know what the coyotes are doing you know what i understand they've got the high skill prospects but what i like about buffalo and they just showed it that the, their willingness to draft the best player on the board the most skilled and they got benson arizona's going like this weird route like they're going for the size they're going for the certain like skill set like simashev at the spot just because what you're hoping for defensive results like that was to me, the potential doesn't reach anywhere close to some of the guys that were on the board. And then drafting Daniil as well. Yes, 6'5", great size. But again, look at some of the guys that were on the board. So you know what? I could end up looking like a dummy for, as I have in the past, for calling certain teams losers for their picks. But I just don't know what Arizona was doing here. I mean, Arizona could have came out of these picks with Mitch Koff and, like, Benson. Like... Are we kidding me? Like the fact that Arizona could have got both those guys, I think they're going to look back and regret it. Uh, Detroit, I didn't feel like they were big time losers, but I, I felt like they should have gone a different direction. Uh, Sandine Pelic has a good, I think, pick at their spot and they got a forward and defenseman. Danielson, all right at nine. I mean, I again, I, I think looking at Detroit, maybe, and again, maybe they were looking for Ryan Leonard and it, it switched them up last second because in my mock draft, if you guys saw it, I had Ryan Leonard uh, dropping past Philly because Philly takes Mitch Koff and then Washington goes defenseman. Well, Washington takes Ryan Leonard and then Philly uh, goes, or sorry, Detroit goes to Danielson. So it changed things up a bit. I don't think, I don't think Detroit's a huge loser, but that's how it goes. Uh, Nashville, I actually like the wood pick. But the second pick with guys like Quentin Musty on the board to go off the board the way they did. I mean, I expected more from Nashville, especially having the Sudbury boys behind the bench. They should have won Quentin Musty. Toronto is not a loser necessarily because I, at the end of the first round, I'm not necessarily going to claim any losers here because you're going to go for risky picks regardless. But I think Andrew Cristal being on the board, I can't believe so many teams passed on him. I had him as a top 15 prospect in this draft. And to me, not that they're that comparable, but it just gives me the same vibes. I had the same vibes on Logan Stankoven and shout out to my guy, Ray Bro. 
I thought Logan St. Coven was a top 15, top 20 prospect in his draft. He fell to the second round. It's looking like an absolute steal for the Dallas Stars. Whoever drafts Andrew Cristal in the second round, I think it's going to be a big time steal. So uh, Toronto high risk pick with Cowan. I actually watching his clips and, and watching his tape, I actually think the guy has shown major progression and the fact that he put over a point per game in the playoffs has a little bit of an edge to him, has great stick sense. Uh, I think it could be end up like it, it, I would say high risk, high reward is the best way to put the Toronto pick and the blues. It's less about their specific picks, more just the fact that they had three picks and they didn't trade one of them. Like the blues are trying to have a quick turnaround here and we want action as NHL hockey fans. Uh, we want action. So it was kind of disappointing to see the blues not make a trade. No like major trades here. So uh, first round was kind of dead in that aspect, but second round and on and going into free agency, I hope we see some big trades. So let me know what you guys think of my winners and losers. Uh, obviously not that concrete, especially for the losers. It's hard to declare this early on, but uh, I feel confident in my winners that I listed. So subscribe, like, comment, notification bell. We'll see you on the next one. It's a late night, guys. So give me a break, but I definitely want to get this video out. So we'll chat soon. Have a good one. Peace.